Thank you everyone for attending. My name is Dr. Karina Kemp. I'm the Director of E-Research at INET. So I lead the team that does all of our outreach to the research community to um, make sure that you know, Arnett is providing services that are useful to the community and that's everything from the backbone network all the way through to our cloud services like Cloud Store um, and Swan that we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to now start with an acknowledgement to country. In the spirit of reconciliation, Arnett acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. I'm calling from Ngunnawal country in Canberra. I'd like to acknowledge uh, the custodians of Ngunnawal country. Welcome to our last talk in our Arnett Researcher Talk winter series. Um, watch this space for what we've got planned um, for the summer series. Um, today we've got uh, Stephen Morgan uh, talking about Cloud Store Swan as a teaching tool. Now Stephen's a bioinformatician and academic specialist with Melbourne Bioinformatics at the University of Melbourne and we'll discuss how Cloud Store's analysis tool Swan has been integrated into the teaching of a master's level subject at the University of Melbourne. Uh, Stephen's going to talk about how he's using it and his lessons learned. Now Stephen's not going to talk about what SWAN is, so I'm going to give you a little bit of an intro to start. So SWAN is our service, stands for Service for Web-Based Analysis, and it's a Jupyter Hub service that sits inside CloudStore and is connected to CloudStore. Um, if you want any more info about it, um, Sarah's put a link in the chat about what it is, um, but please reach out if you want any specifics. I am going to stop sharing and I'm going to hand over to Stephen. Thanks for that introduction. Um, hopefully you can see my slides now. Um, first of all, I'd like to echo the acknowledgement of country um, and acknowledge the Indigenous people's continuing connection to land and water. Um, and I'd extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are here in the meeting or, or may be watching the recording afterwards. Um, I'm coming to you from Wurundjeri country at the moment. Um, and that's, that's also where the University of Melbourne is. Um, not that I've been on site at the university as much as I would have liked um, in the past year. So um, yeah, what I'm gonna be talking to you about today is how we used Cloud Store Swan in the teaching of a, of a master's level subject. So I'll be addressing the, the following set of, of pretty basic questions. Um, and these are the questions that, that we were most interested in when we first thought of doing this. We didn't really know how it would go. So um, I'm hoping that if there is anyone considering uh, doing something similar, that they'll be able to take something out of this. Um, so first I'll introduce the subject, um, just enough to make, make the rest of it make sense. Um, and if you've got more questions or you need more context, then yeah, you can just put your questions in the chat. Um, I'll either see them as I'm talking or I can get to them at the end. Um, I'll also talk about why we made the choice to use Swan for the subject and exactly how we used um, Cloud Store Swan and for which parts of the subject. And then finally, at the end, I'll summarize um, why we found it a useful tool um, as teachers and um, equally uh, why it was useful for the students. Um, and thank you to that um, for that little intro to Swan um, at the start there. So, you know, again, it's a very, very briefly, it's a um, data analysis service um, that runs on Cloud Store and it's built on Jupyter Hub. Um, and critically, all you need is a web browser. So it's nice and accessible. Uh, okay. So first of all, you heard in the introduction that I work at Melbourne Bioinformatics. Um, and if you haven't heard of bioinformatics, um, it sort of sits at the intersection of, of biology and computer science and, and mathematics. Um, and beside that is what I, I guess is kind of the log line of Melbourne Bioinformatics. So we're all about helping researchers and students with their bioinformatics needs. Um, and part of my job is that I'm, I'm lucky enough to be a subject coordinator for a master's level subject at the University of Melbourne. Um, and that subject is called computational genomics. Um, that's the subject banner that we use up the top there. Um, critically, I'm not the only person who works on this subject. I'm aware that I am the one talking here, but um, you know, a lot of the effort comes from lots of other people. 
um, particularly Vicky, who is my um, co-coordinator, and Holly, who is our awesome tutor. Uh, so last semester, this happened in the first, first half of this year, we had 86 very bright students. Um, and that number seems to be uh, increasing over time. Um, that the subject was delivered entirely online in 2021. So it's probably a little different to um, some of our university experiences. Um, most of our students, I would say, were based in Melbourne, but others were um, scattered all across the globe. We had um, students from uh, quite a few students from mainland China um, and some from from other parts of the world and, and other time zones. Um, and we ran a, a standard 12 week semester plus an end of semester exam right at the end. So this is a very highly condensed version of what the intended learning outcomes of this subject are. Um, basically, we want our students to understand a range of um, computational genomics analyses. Um, and we want, we want them to be able to think creatively and, and design workflows for novel scenarios. Um, but we don't just want them to know about these analyses. We, we want them to be um, sort of writing their own Python functions to accomplish some of those tasks and also make use of some of the tools that already exist, some of those popular tools um, that we can use to get jobs done. Um, and basically the, the breakdown of how this subject worked, if you're a student, um, every week there were two lectures. I won't be talking very much about those. Um, and there was one workshop and less frequently. So not every week um, we had some assessment, um, you know, assessment is, is one of those things that is necessary to university um, subjects. So we had um, several assignments and like I mentioned at the end of the semester, we had an exam. So why did we choose Cladsdor Swan um, to use in our subject? Well, I, I actually can't take much credit for that initial decision. Um, thank you to Vicky for that. Um, but I'll go through some of the factors that went into making that decision. So this does sound really basic, but it is really important that our students have hands on analysis experience. Um, you know, it's all well and good to learn about all the theoreticals of, of the subject material um, in our lectures from our wonderful lecturers. Um, but we do want our students to gain some practical experience, to give it a go, to make mistakes um, and to learn from them. Um, the good thing about having sort of a shared computing environment is that every student has the same experience. There's a um, sort of a consistent layout. Um, it doesn't matter if you're on a Mac or a PC or you're running Linux. Um, every student can run... Um, Cloud Store Swan from a web browser. It doesn't matter if you have, a, you know, an entanglement of um, software that is previously installed and you've got dependencies all over the place and it's a big mess. Um, the Cloud Store Swan um, allows for sort of consistent software versions and dependencies. Um, it also allows, as as teachers, we only need to write. Uh, one set of instructions. We don't need to worry about this subset of people who have this problem, they're going to need to do something different and the people on a Mac, they're going to need to do, follow these different instructions. Um, and sort of along a similar line, um, it really simplifies troubleshooting. Um, I can't tell you how much of a nightmare it is to um, talk students through software installs on their personal computers because every student has a different setup. Um, so reducing that troubleshooting time um, is, is really important. Um, we also, one important um, consideration is that we also want to maintain fairness in assessment. So I'll come to this a bit later, but Cloud Store Swan did play a part in the assessment in this subject. Um, because everyone has um, exactly the same environment, they all have um, sort of equal opportunity in their assessments. When we ask them to write code and we uh, assess that code, students can um, write the code or at least test the code on Cloud Store Swan. And they, have, they can have confidence that if it works for them at that time with their Cloud Store account, 
that when we come to test it on our cloud store account, it's exactly the same environment. It's going to work exactly the same way. Um, and it, it kind of avoids that situation where students code doesn't work just because it relies on something that is unique to their personal setup. And we don't happen to have that installed. Um, and then, you know, it, it looks like they might have a, a wrong answer there. Um, we also have an eye on practicalities as well. When we're talking about um, code questions, um, we can't have students code just running forever. So we can make some statements about the runtime of code and students can be, um, can have confidence that if they execute their code and it takes 10 seconds on their account, that it's gonna take about 10 seconds on our account too. And the other thing is that we, we're aiming to train the next generation of researchers here. So part of our course is about useful tools that can help facilitate research. And, you know, Cloud Store is one of those tools. Um, the students find the cloud storage, the file sender is particularly useful. Um, you know, that, that um, terabyte of storage for their uni projects, that's nothing to be sneezed at. Um, and a lot of our students before, um, before we introduced it, hadn't either hadn't heard of it at all or, or hadn't used it um, before. So, um, and another important point is that so critically, once the semester is over and our students, they walk away into the sunset, they've got their great results, they're really happy, um, all their work is still there. And if they ever want to go back and refer to it, um, it's there where they left it. And at the end of the semester, they now have experience using this um, service that could help them in the future. You know, they, they have a login, they know how to use it, they're good to go. Um, in past versions of this subject, we had a sort of a custom server set up um, where that's not the case. We get to the end of the semester, it was wiped, students couldn't get to it again. So um, we think it's really valuable that 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 persists, whether that is for looking back on the um, subject material that, that we were doing, or they have completely new ideas, completely new research, and they say, I know just the place for this. Um, I've learned about this, this service before at uni. So how did we actually use it? Um, this part of the setup, it, it, it is pretty straightforward, but I did want to mention it because it's actually, um, it is actually important um, that it's actually very simple to get an account in that, that first sort of workshop where the students are still getting to know each other, they're, they're meeting each other, that sort of thing. We want as, as little friction as possible. Um, and it, if you have used um, Cloud Store or Cloud Source One before, it's probably a long time before you, um, it's probably a long time um, between when you last set up an account. Um, and really all it took is picking your institution from a list, you use your institutional login. So you don't even need to use a new password. Um, and for us, that's great because it, it takes students all of about five minutes to get set up and we're ready to go with the content. It's not like the whole, um, the whole of the first workshop is, um, getting students to install things and set it up right. And oops, I don't have the right version, that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, really what we want is the, the interface playing a supporting role here to the content. And, you know, like I said before, we have limited teaching time. So um, the, the more that we can be focused on the learning and not, um, you know, the, the technical problems, um, the better. So the, um, the first aspect that we used Cloud Store Swan for was our workshops. And for our workshops, we used um, Jupyter Notebooks. Um, I won't explain in too much detail what Jupyter Notebooks are. I'll show you some um, examples of, of stuff that we've used Jupyter Notebooks for, but basically the Jupyter Notebooks are really great because we can put the instructions and the tasks all in one document. So there's only one file per workshop. It keeps it nice and organized. Um, if we're using code, there'll be code in there. You can have the output of the code. There'll, there can be figures and diagrams, and there can also be text. And it's all mixed in the same document, um, whatever order you want. 
you don't have to switch interfaces. It's not like um, the, the worded instructions are in a Word document and then we flip over to some other in, in, interface to do any coding. Um, it's all right there, it's all organized. Um, and the students, it's quite easy to pick up um, those skills quickly with a short tutorial. So this is an example of, of um, a small part of one of our workshops. Um, and you can see we've got some, we've got a heading, we've got some instructions, and then right below the instructions, we have a place to actually do a task. You know, so we've, we've sort of set up the, the bones of, um, of this code cell. And you can see there might be a bit small, but you can, maybe you can see my mouse that says your code here. We say to the students, um, go for your life. This is one of our, one of our earlier workshops, might be workshop one or two, where we're just getting them to do some pretty basic, um, simple stuff. And then the, the lower code block down there, we, we can give them a sort of a test um, input and we give them the output that it should produce if they've, um, if they've written a, a correct function there. Um, and then we can also give them some, um, some larger input. So now that you've done it on the trivial um, test case, um, try, try something larger. Um, and we had, we had really great, um, sort of a, a really great interactive um, session as well, where, where students were posting their, um, their code and they were trying out each other's code. It was really good. So in our workshops, we use um, lots of pre-existing tools. We're not, we're not really in the business of reinventing the wheel too much. And we want to, we want to show our students some of the great tools that are out there. So um, some of those tools are, are pre-installed. There's a big long list of, um, of tools and libraries that are um, pre-installed on Swan. Um, that actually might be a good, a good link to put in the chat um, if you can find it. Um, so some that we used uh, regularly, pip, matplotlib, um, seaborn, numpy, pandas, um, some of those will be um, very familiar to some of you. Um, and we also had a, a small suite of genomics tools kindly installed for us by Michael De Silva. So thank you, Michael. Um, those were really useful. And if there are any, um, any bioinformaticians uh, in the audience or, or watching the video, those tools are there and they're ready to go. Um, so what this allows us to do is that we're not just explaining how the tools work to the students and, and we're not even just providing some example output. The students can actually have a go, have a play, see what the arguments do, um, and even put some of these tools together and construct some, um, some basic pipelines. Uh, this part of the work, this part of the course is, is actually fairly new. Um, I found that we got quite a lot of comments from past students and they said that it was great that we learned Python in these subjects. Um, but I got to my job or I got to my research project and they expected me to know about the command line and I didn't. Um, so that's something we've, we've incorporated into this subject and cloud store Swan has allowed us to do that because it's got a, a command line interface right there, ready to go in the, in the um, sort of Jupyter interface there. Um, and like I was saying before, um, it's that consistency of experience. Everyone's looks the same. Everyone has the same format, the same tools are installed and the same file system. So when we're doing, you know, command line 101, the very basics, um, students can, um, can be sure that they're, um, what they're reading from uh, what we're saying and, and the tutorial that we're using um, will apply to them as well, regardless of, um, of what local machine that they may have. And so for the assignments, we also use Jupyter Notebooks and, you know, we do that very deliberately because we, again, we want our students to be focused on the task, not the interface. Um, and by the first assignment, they've already had practice. They already know how to use and navigate these Jupyter Notebooks from their workshops. So again, all the instructions, all the tasks, they're in one document. Um, and there's, there's, you can have one notebook file per assignment. 
um, we make sure it has a nice, clear, easy structure when so we sort of have all the instructions and we mark very clearly where we want input from the student um, where there is a question we'll we'll clearly mark you know your answer goes here and that helps us to mark it as well because the um, the markers can can easily get to uh, where the student responses are um, the Jupyter notebooks allow us to mix code questions and worded questions together. So it's not like um, assignment one is all about Python code and assignment two is all about worded questions. We can mix those in um, and we can have our questions sort of referencing each other. Um, another important point, um, if you are at a, a university or, or somewhere where you need to mark things, um, is that it's it's really easy to export a Jupyter Notebook to PDF or HTML. Um, and those formats work really nicely with plagiarism detection software that obviously needs to be used. So this is an example of a part of, of one of our assignments. Um, this, this actually might be a little small, but I'll talk you through the basics. Um, so we've got some... Um, We've got some instructions up the top, just in um, in regular text, um, and right below that we have a, a graded cell, which is clearly marked. It shows them how many marks and a rough time frame. Although uh, we actually didn't have any students get anywhere close to these time frames, so we made sure we were nice and lenient. Um, so you can see we've got a coding question here where the student is out. It was, is asked to, um, to write some code and then they can test out their code on this cell directly below. So we've got some, some demo data here. And if, um, if their code is working properly, they should get this output over here. Um, and then we give them a, a test case that doesn't have um, the output, um, the answers right there. Um, and then you can see right below, we've got a worded question that, that relates to the coded question above. So that can that sort of shows how um, Jupyter Notebooks are really good for interweaving those, those different kinds of questions together. So we get to the scary part, which is the exams. Um, and most of us listening, we probably remember our own exams and you know, we we're in a, a big exam hall and you're cramped onto that tiny little desk and you've got people walking up and down. Um, unfortunately, that's not the case anymore. Um, in so, so this year and also last year, these exams were run entirely online. So in this subject, we chose to include a, a take home component. Um, although all the students are at home, really, um, we called it a take home component anyway. This this was essentially another assignment or it's at least in the same format as an assignment. And again, we, we do that deliberately because, um, you know, we don't want the students um, to be panicking about um, learning a new software tool, especially for their exam. It's something that they're comfortable with already. So it's a familiar structure. They've got similar types of questions. The submission process is also the same. Obviously we had, um, very strict rules about how the how the exam would take place. And again, we have a mix of code and word questions. So we really got to test all of the aspects of the subject that we were teaching. And again, the um, Cloud Store Swan was used for testing and marking this um, university exam. And I'm, I'm pleased to say that it went off without a hitch, which was really good. So why was, why was it a useful tool? Well, um, I'm gonna talk about some of these reasons and I'll break that into, into two parts. And hopefully um, if you're having some of those questions that I, that I talked about at the start, um, some of these will apply to you as well. So yeah, like, like I said before, university students, they have enough to worry about in 2021 without having to deal with um, learning foreign or confusing interfaces. Um, and this one um, we found is, is nice and frictionless. It's, it's easy to create an account. Um, you can learn it in um, next to no time. You do need a web browser and internet access. Um, the, basically, it's like I said before, whatever software you have installed, whatever operating system, it doesn't matter. You may even be using a, 
um, a machine that is, you know, a work machine or a, a uni machine, that doesn't matter. Um, students also appreciate the introduction to this service, to the, the cloud storage, which is great, the file send us one. Um, and the other thing that um, that is important for the students is that that interface persists even once the subject is over. And from the teaching perspective, um, the same thing applies that the software and the operating systems, they don't matter. So it doesn't matter what, what device I'm using. Am I using my home laptop, my uni machine? Um, it's definitely easier to troubleshoot. Um, like I said, having all the students on the same, um, on the same system means that if one person does have a problem, more than one student probably has that problem and it, it, um, it means your time is used better because, you know, in finding a solution to that problem, you're helping more than one student. Um, the instructions that you write, they can be really clear. Um, they, you don't need to have sort of diverting tracks for Mac users do this, PC users do this. Um, the tool versions and the dependencies, that can really be a nightmare, um, especially when you're asked, when um, you're sort of returning to material maybe a year later and one tool has been updated and now it doesn't play nicely with some other tool. Um, it takes advantage of Jupyter Notebooks and, and we really like Jupyter Notebooks. They're a great document for, for teaching um, and assessment actually. Um, it works with standard file submission software and, and plagiarism detection systems, which, um, you know, is, is really important at, at universities that, um, the, the marking process is something that can, um, can take time. So we want that to run as smoothly as possible. Um, it's quite easy to share resources between colleagues. Um, we found that um, when we're asking for input for, from some of our colleagues, um, when we're um, sort of designing some of these um, uh, lessons or workshops, it's easy to say, to one of my colleagues, um, can you jump on SWAN and download this as though you're a student? And then can you try question three? Because I'm not sure if the, if the instructions are, are clear there or does this tool, um, does this tool work? Those kind of questions are really easy. Um, and also there's no need to create that new custom server each year. That, that was, um, that can be a bit of a headache each time. And so with that, there's some thank yous. Um, obviously, thank you to the teaching team, um, Vicky and Holly. It, it was a team effort. I know it's me talking here, but um, it was a, a big team effort. Um, thank you to Dr. Tom Harrop, Dr. Khalid Mahmood for their um, support with some of our assignments. Um, at Arnet, particularly Dr. Sarah King and Michael De Silva were really, um, really important um, in getting this um, aspect of the course um, up and working. Um, lots of my Melbourne Bioinformatics colleagues um, helped um, with their, um, even just with their thoughts, but but also with their um, with their expertise in different parts of the course that I'm I'm not talking about today. Um, and also a big thank you to our student cohort. Um, they were um, you know a pleasure to deal with, and uh, we, we were really pleased that the semester um, ended up really well at the end there. Um, so. Thank you very much. I, I can see I've got a red bubble next to my chat, so I'll I'll might just stop sharing and then um, I can answer some questions. Thanks very much, Stephen. Um, that was that was really interesting.